Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the A4E Skyhawk. It's February 2021. Version 2.0.0 is out. We now have radio navigation working. That is TACAN Tactical Air Navigation, which allows us to navigate to a TACAN station, which in this case is going to be at this airbase, but it could equally be on a carrier, for instance. And ILS, Instrument Landing System, which is a system that will guide us along a glide slope to the runway. So... Here is our A4, it's currently at 4,500 feet, 300 knots, heading roughly north. We've got to get to the approach point for this runway 07 at Cobuleti, that's that there, 10 miles out. Bearing in mind the 300 feet MSL for every 10 miles out, we want to get to our approach point here at about 3,000 feet MSL. The way we'll do it is we'll first use TACAN to get roughly to this point in the right direction of the runway and get to about 10 miles out. At that point, we will then turn from Tacan to ILS to guide us in the glide slope down to the runway. It's all super simple. First, we need to go and get the Tacan station code and uh, the Morse code identifier of this Tacan. So we zoom in here. That is the universal symbol of a Tacan station. This one is channel 67 X-ray Morse code identifier KBL. Let's jump into the plane. First of all, I can't see a thing. So Rio stats up for interior lights. Pause it there so we've got some talking time looking for our tack and set here. So let's turn our master mode to transmit receive, which will give us an azimuth and ranging guidance to the station. We're going to turn the volume up to maximum so we can hear it. We've got to change these numbers here so they spell out 6, 7. So it's going to be a case of clicking in the right place in relation to the center of this. So if I go to the center, left click and right click will give me that digit there. If I go for uh, wants to be 7 out here, we'll get these digits. Left click, right click to cycle, 67 X-ray. And you can hear the Morse code identifiers come in. If you could be bothered, you could go to Google or whatever and convert that Morse code to check if it spells KBL. That will confirm you're on the correct TACAN station. Next, ensure that our BDHI, this determines what navigation input will drive our navigation instruments, our HSI here and our ADI here. Currently it's in the middle, which is TACAN, which will also serve ILS. So basically leave this guy in the middle. We'll look at our HSI for our TACAN and we can see that this guy here, this needle with the pointy end, is guiding us to our TACAN station. It's telling us to turn to about 059 and we are currently pointing just right of north. So let's unpause. So we've got to get our speed to something reasonable, let's say 250 knots. We've got to get our altitude to... 3,000 feet MSL to get us at the correct uh, height at the 10 mile perch and we want to get ourselves facing the uh, the airfield. Now, usually you would couple this instrument here with a coarse needle. As far as I'm aware they don't have a coarse needle at the moment so we can't do coarse deviation with TACAN. That's probably going to be added later. Unpause. Oh, distance is the other thing. We can currently see that we are one nine miles from the transmitter, 19 miles. Got a, got a ways to go yet. Three and a half thousand feet. We are 14 miles away. All is going well. Descent rate is fine. Direction is fine. We're retrimming to suit 3,000 feet here. And the barometric altimeter, which you can see there if you don't know. 12 miles away, so let's continue like this for a while. If you zoomed in, you would probably see the runway on the nose, but we're not going to cheat. Getting a little slow and getting a little low. Power on. Ah, we're at 10 miles now, as you can see. We're going to switch over to ILS. Put the pause on so that they can talk about it. So, right shift and knee, uh, right shift and K, right square bracket to change the page. That's INS, waypoints, right square bracket again for the ILS data. Find the airfield we want to go to. It is Cobuleti, that one there. Morse identifier. India, Kilo, Bravo, frequency 11150, channel 6. Well, let's go and set the channel up then. We are going to go ILS, and we're going to go channel 06. So, 0, whoops, 6, listen to the identifier. Again, you can go and translate that Morse code and check that it's India, Kilo, Bravo, and I'm sure it will be. 
we will now get guidance information from our ADI. So, wow, that's we've, uh, we've got ourselves so perfectly on the perch, we're almost perfectly uh, centered on the ADI here. So we've done a really nice approach set. This is our localizer line. This guides us in terms of azimuth. The idea is to keep that as central on the ADI as possible. Same thing with the glide slope here. We want to keep this centered. So in the best case, we'll have the localizer, the glide slope centered at all the time, and that will literally guide us all the way down to the runway to within you know a couple of hundred feet. All we have to do is follow that, our speed, do our flaps, gear, stuff like that. And it's as simple as that. So, unpause. Try not to screw it up. It's pretty much my motto in life. So, we're high. Fast. High. And left. Still high and left. This thing takes a lot of practice, by the way. It's not something I'm good at, as you've probably already realised. This is called flying IFR, so we're, we're, we're flying by our instruments because we're pretending that it's foggy and there's no point of looking at the canopy. Under glide slope. And we're to the right. Embarrassing for us. We'll start coming down on the power. We've gone right of glide slope, which is a little bit frustrating for us. Perhaps can start to come down. Perhaps will tend to push us upwards, so you can see it's pushed us above, so retrim. All the flaps. Hi. You're wondering how we can tell how close we are to the runway because we've not got this working anymore. But what we do have, we know we're coming down at a glide slope at three degrees or whatever it is, and we can tell by a barometric altimeter, which should, if it's zero to the runway, read zero on the runway. So therefore, we know for at 900 feet, that's three miles out. We come down to full flaps and make the necessary uh, trim adjustments. Now left, glide slope, we're high again. That's unfortunately what flaps do. Gear out. Seven hundred feet with two miles. I should say you can zero your altimeter to the Q and H of the runway, by the way, uh, with that guy there. Uh, you can do that via the communications menu for the radio which does now work in this aircraft by talking to the runway. Oh, I'm going to stall. Embarrassing for me. That's okay. Back on the power. Okay, we're low and we're left. And the slats doing their thing. Okay, I think 400 feet, we're one mile. Pretty good. Now right to radial, look up, and there's a runway, how about that? Not the cleanest, but you know, it worked. And I'm down safe and happy, whoops. There we go. And she's down. So that is the basics of using TACAL. Takan, sorry, to get to our approach point. Again, if you're doing it properly, you should really be using coarse needle and coarse deviation, but I don't think we've got that at the moment. Then, at about 10 miles, once we're on our perch, we're going to select ILS, follow the ILS glide slope, as we've seen. Like I said, practice without looking through the window, so that you can do it all without looking through the window. You can determine how close you are, assuming you've set your altimeter via the MSL altitude there. And then all you've got to do is just follow the lines, watch your speed, put your gear out, and land the aircraft. That's all I've got to show. I hope that was useful and see you later.